Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Friday morning to you all. I hope you guys are doing awesome out there this morning and having a wonderful start to your day and a great beginning to your weekend out there so far. Here to give you the latest information on multiple things in this morning's video. The first thing we will go over is the latest information on the tropics. What's going on out there in the Atlantic? There's multiple areas of interest to watch. But is anything concerning? And I'm just going to answer that right off the dot. No, it is not. But I'll lead it to say this. We are going to go over all the model guides from overnight to this morning. And since, of, I would say since about two days ago, we started seeing something in the long range models, which I know uh, is not very reliable all the time. But we've seen it for the last couple of days now. It's like in a wave coming off Africa and then making the entire track across the Atlantic and then eventually becoming a hurricane. So this is something that we need to watch. Uh, does the trends continue through the weekend all the way into early next week? If they do, then this could be something that we really, really need to watch. Am I going to use the word concerning for this? No, not yet. But this is something we definitely need to watch. So I'll discuss that in the update in the tropics after we get done doing that we'll discuss this reinforcing cool shot that is already moving across areas of the country right now areas of the upper midwest the great lakes region uh, waking up to some chilly conditions it'll be even cooler tomorrow this cool air will make it all the way uh, to the south i mean areas of like tennessee maybe as far south as like northern alabama northern mississippi could get as low as the low 50s maybe some upper 40s uh, so we're going to talk about how cool it could potentially get over the next several days into next week. And then, of course, I got you covered as far as what's going to happen weather-wise across the entire lower 48 for your Friday. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over, please put those in the comments below. So let's get rocking and rolling on this wonderful Friday morning. So make sure this is working. It is, so we're good to go. I'm going to circle a lot of stuff um out here in the atlantic okay <clears throat> i just want to sh show you all the little areas of interest dubbed by the national hurricane center so we'll start off by showing you this yellow does not show it really well on this but hopefully you can see it pretty good so i would say that this is a this is the thing in the atlantic that your eyes go to probably first so this is kind of a non-tropical low subtropical low has maybe a little bit of tropical characteristics with it but uh regardless this is moving north into some cooler waters this is going to bring some impacts to Nova Scotia as it continues to move north. What kind of impacts? We will have a segment for that. So if you're tuning in, you're from Canada, Nova Scotia, Atlantic, Canada. I will have a segment in the Northeast timestamp in this video. So definitely jump ahead to that if you want to hear about and know about impacts. So we got that. We're watching that. That has a chance to develop, but it's it's not. It's not going to develop. Uh, then we have this area right here. I'm just going to circle a very large area of the northwest Gulf of Mexico. There's just some shower and storm activity. You guys know this already in Louisiana. You've been dealing with it for about a week. You might deal with it for another week, uh, just on and off <clears throat> moisture. So we're, we're watching this area. This does have a chance to develop. I mentioned yesterday on social media that I could see this very sneaky like taking the next name out of the list of names, which is the F name Francine. Um, we've seen this time and time again. It seems like it happens every hurricane season. We get something sneaky in the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of the southeast. So I am watching this. The National Hurricane Center has a very low chance of this developing to something uh, that would be considered a depression or a named storm, which would make it Francine. But I'm watching it, and I'm watching any energy in the Gulf of Mexico that can kind of make its way across the northern Gulf of Mexico and then maybe even get off the coast of the southeast as we get like into next week or so. And even though we don't have an area of interest dubbed by the National Hurricane Center in this area, I would say I'm kind of dubbing this area National Hurricane Center uh, personally uh, for next week. Not this weekend, but maybe ne next week, maybe late next week. I want to watch off the coast of the southeast. And then we still got this area down here, which once upon a time, like a week ago from today, was showing some very concerning model runs with a hurricane making its way across areas of the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico. Well, that has since is history. That's not the case anymore. And it's just a wave that you can barely even distinguish between anything else out here. But we will watch as it does have a very small chance to develop somewhere in the Bay of Campeche. Uh, and then I'm going to draw this entire, so we'll circle this entire area right out here. And the National Hurricane Center does not have this entire area circled, but I'm going to circle it. Uh, they are still watching kind of this energy right in here, but I'm going to watch 
waves that come, and they are too. I'm not saying that, hey, you know, only Mitch is watching this. The National Hurricane Center sees everything that I see, probably more, and they can probably analyze it better also. But I'm watching any waves that come off Africa into the tropical Atlantic, and they certainly are. They could potentially develop into this area and then some model runs have this making the entire track across the um, Atlantic. So there's a lot of things where we've got circled on here, but nothing is concerning. So we'll actually get this off your screen and continue to move forward. Now we look at the actual National Hurricane Center map here from earlier this morning. Just a bunch of lemons, what we call it in the weather community. Um, and this has a 30% chance to develop. It's actually an Invest 99L. 30% uh, chance to develop sometime in the next few days, not seven. You might as well say few days. So it could do something sneaky, but it's running out of warm water, I would say. And then it has just this elongated trough of low pressure over the eastern tropical Atlantic uh, that could produce something. 10%. This is still at a 20%, but it's dropped. It, seem, it seems like every 12 hours it drops. This is probably not going to develop anymore. And then we still got this little area that's actually an invest. This invest 90L, 10% chance to develop sometime in the next seven days. And I actually want to zoom into that area. This is it, right off the coast of Texas. You see that spin right here? I'm telling you, this is going to get, this is going to hang out in this area for a time. It could make its way inland. Then another spin could get going here as a cold front is sagging south. We'll kind of uh, shunt all the moisture off into the Gulf of Mexico. I just want to watch this area right here. You can see a little spin. I know it looks kind of blurry and that is because the sun has not came up so we don't have a clear satellite view of this but that's a gnarly little spin off the coast of Texas right now so we'll continue to watch that. Now let's go over all the latest model guides and I know this is kind of zoomed out a little bit harder to see probably uh, but you know we just want to see the larger picture here because there's a lot going on a lot of smaller features going on I would say. So there's our our tropical low right here that's going to go right into Nova Scotia. And there it is going right into Nova Scotia sometime a Saturday. There's a piece of energy moving off the coast of the southeast. You see a low pressure there. We just want to watch these little features as they, you know, could do something later this weekend. I doubt it. But we'll watch. There's an L popping off out here in the Atlantic. Not a big deal. And you continue to see a lot of moisture um, into the Gulf of Mexico right into this area. So you just want to continue to watch this. You know, Euro says, hey, you know, this is this is not going to develop into something, but it's just something to watch. Uh, we'll continue to move forward here. We're getting all the way into next Tuesday morning. Not a whole lot going on. A couple tropical waves out here in the Atlantic. We continue to move all the way into next Thursday morning, September the 12th. We got a couple weak, very small uh, tropical waves, kind of a little bit more north in latitude, I would say. Uh, but they're cruising across the Atlantic. Not a whole lot going back, back at you know, back closer to home. We get about a week out from today. Just some moisture hanging off off the coast of the southeast, and that's when I want to watch. Really, next weekend. Not so much like early midway next week. Really, late next week into next weekend. You want to watch off the coast of the southeast. Some model runs have consistently shown something popping off off the coast of the southeast. Whether that affects anybody or is a big deal, even if it does, we're not sure. It's too far out. But I would tell you, the Euro does not latch on to anything of what I was saying at the beginning of the video. It doesn't like the idea of any waves making it across the Atlantic. It does try to develop something off the coast of the southeast, though. Now, if you look at the run from yesterday, it did develop something, one of these waves, into a tropical storm. By not this Sunday, but next Sunday, September the 5th. Now let's go over the GFS run from last night because the 06Z run is still running. I'm going to try to jump to it after I'm done discussing this run. Same thing. That low goes right into Nova Scotia. Could pack a bit of a punch. We'll have to see. Um, but we continue to move past that. We'll watch these little areas of energy that scoot off the coast of the eastern U.S. These could actually impact Atlantic Canada too early next week. Um, then, you know, here's a couple waves right here, Tuesday morning, tries to develop something in the western Gulf of Mexico, just a thousand and six millibar low. It actually is almost successful in developing this before moving inland, uh, bring some tropical moisture into the Louisiana, Texas coastline midway next week. I mean, that that isn't any different than what we've seen over the last several days. There's that wave trying to make it. It's a thousand of millibar low. Next Saturday morning, eight days from now, you could argue that's a tropical storm. A little very, very small, petite 
a hurricane 981 i mean that is a small small hurricane um and we get into sunday morning next sunday morning i want to add september the 5th and it has a strong hurricane cruising into the caribbean and then it proceeds to go through the caribbean and then impact the greater antilles and you know whatever happens after that who knows i mean we get all the way to about 15 days out and this thing is, hasn't even made it to the gulf of mexico yet so what about um what about the 06z run where we got about a week and a half out i'm sorry about seven and a half days out let's see what it shows i hadn't even seen this yet so same deal it wants to try to develop something in the western gulf of mexico but of course there's nothing too concerning about it it does kind of something very similar though as the ooz almost identical has these waves out here in the atlantic you want to watch these features they keep showing up does it develop any of them um again the next friday morning no it looks like as we get into next saturday morning though it still has them they're just weaker it has both of them are they going to develop in anything not sure because we don't have the entire length of this run but at the same time folks this is past seven days out we don't know exactly what's going to happen now the icon we can go 120 hours out the icon consistently wants to develop something come on keep going it consistently wants to develop something in the Gulf of Mexico. You see this down here has a sub 1000 millibar low tropical storm. Um, it almost makes it a hurricane status and it's heading right towards the Texas coastline about midway next week. And it has a lot of pieces of energy out here in the Eastern and Central Atlantic too. So it still shows it if we actually go and look at the OOZ of the icon, what does it continue to show makes landfall. That Gulf of Mexico system makes landfall as a tropical storm midway next week, September the 11th. And we have two or three tropical disturbances out here in the central um, Atlantic. And they're trying to get going. There's a lot of little pieces of energy. We got this one off the coast of the southeast that I keep mentioning. These little three little things right out here, whatever they're going to do. So we're watching them. Now the Canadian model, um, same thing. Hangs a lot of moisture out in the western uh, Gulf of Mexico. And then there's multiple tropical waves out there in the Atlantic. We get about seven days from now. Latches onto this one wave right here. And it does proceed to strengthen it into tropical storm status. And by the time we are all the way to about 10 days out, the end of next weekend, we have close to a hurricane um, starting to enter the southwest Atlantic. Okay, right here. I know this thing is very small to see on your screen. The only reason I'm not zoomed into these areas, guys, is because th there's a lot of, there's things going on in a very wide area out here in the Atlantic. So if we look at the European Ensemble, we'll go all the way out to next Tuesday, next Tuesday evening. There's a little signal for one of these waves that try to get going. There's the signal in the Western Gulf of Mexico, a little weak signal in the Southwest Atlantic. I'm not buying that much. So but this is the larger signal coming off of Africa. Now we take this one week out and that signal remains and remains pretty strong as it makes it to the central Atlantic. The other wave in front of it, uh, very wide, kind of broad. It's not very loud at all, very loud signal at all, but it's something to watch. But it really latches onto this one wave that continues to show up in model guidance as kind of forming into a very small tropical storm or hurricane euro operational run doesn't show up much and there's that signal right here for a weak tropical wave or depression maybe even as high end as a storm moving into the louisiana texas coastline sometime next week so we'll continue to watch this um is it worth making two videos a day over yet no it's not it's not concerning but once it hits that concerning criteria then we'll start pumping out two videos a day but let's talk about this cool down on the way. So this is current temperatures. In fact, let's update this, see if there's any cooler. These are current temperatures right now. And I'm showing you this because you can see the defining, the de defining line between cooler air and moist and warmer air. For example, in Chicago, it's in the upper 60s. You head on up to Green Bay, it's, it's almost 50 degrees. So you can tell where the cold front is. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that right into here. And you're asking probably, what is this cooler pocket of air here? Well, that's just a little bit of leftover 
cool and dry air from the trough that's already progressed to eastward. But man, this entire area down here, warm, warm air all the way up into southern Ontario. But don't worry, if you awaken up in this area that I drew all the squiggly lines in, glory is coming, fall is coming fast, and you'll notice a, a huge difference by the time you get into this evening in some of these areas. So that's current temperatures. Um, what's driving this pattern? Well, it's this big blue area, this trough of low pressure, this upper trough digging down with the cold front associated with it. Of course, you got uh, the orange and red area out here out west. This is a ridge of high pressure pumping up and flexing and, and, and bringing all the unfortunate dry and, and hot air out here. But your pattern could change soon. But this trough continues to dive down throughout the weekend and uh, just bring cooler air and unsettled weather for, you know, probably up here in Quebec and Ontario, just because you're underneath the, the, the actual upper low associated with this trough of low pressure. But, you know, the lingering effects of this trough will hang around all the way through next week and continue to bring nice warm air. Now, eventually the pattern flips when we get a big trough dump out west. This could bring cooler and more unsettled weather out west and we could get a ridge that eventually builds up into eastern Canada and the eastern U.S. in general. But, you know, some model guidance kind of shows the cooler air sticking around, especially for the southeast. And, and speaking of temperature anomalies, these are temperatures compared to average. You know, we start to move into Saturday. Look at this. If you're a big fan of college football, cooler fall-like air, who isn't? If you're not, man, I don't, I don't know. I ain't got a whole lot for you. Uh, but um, look at these temperatures um, compared to average. If you live in the green area, folks, that's 10. It's like anywhere from 8, I would say, to, to 13, 14 degrees below average. I mean, some of these areas are over 15 degrees below average for high temperatures. And uh, just most of the central and eastern U.S. below average. And then we start to get into Sunday. This is Sunday morning. Low time temperatures, anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees below average. Uh, I mean, widespread 40s, you're going to need a coat for church. And then we get into next week, these below average temperatures remain across areas of the south, the southeast, the eastern U.S. And it does show that it starts to warm up across like the northern terrain of the country. Cooler air sticks around the, for the south. And I really think this is driven off just unsettled weather, cloudy cloudy weather and things like that. I really don't think you're going to continue to get low time temperatures that are really chilly and cool and crisp. I think it's more so driven off daytime temperatures being lower from just a lot of cloud cover and rain. So this is predicted low temperatures for tomorrow. I mean, look at this. Right now, it's in the 60s across the Midwest and the Ohio Valley, right? So it's in like the 60s in Indianapolis, for example. You got you. I used you guys as an example yesterday. Tomorrow it'll be in the upper 40s. Look at these mid 30s up here in Wisconsin. Some somebody might get below freezing. Um, fall foliage will certainly. Uh, this will really get the fall foliage ongoing. The changing of the leaves. Um, I've all, I'm always interested in these little micro areas where the leaves change. For example, um, buddy of mine. I made a video uh, if you haven't checked it out if you're wondering about fall colors guys check out explorefall.com um phenomenal people that run this this channel peter and evan just do a great job but he was ta talking about this little area up here in northeast minnesota that kind of has like a maple forest where you guys is uh, peak fall foliage it, it really gets peaking like like in the end of september when everybody else more so probably october so Pretty wild stuff up here, kind of just a micro area. I'm, I'm always very interested in these microclimates and stuff like that. But very chilly temperatures tomorrow morning. We start to move into Sunday morning. Look at these chilly temperatures across a very large area. I mean, we're going to get into the 40s as far south as Arkansas. I mean, Dallas-Fort Worth area could get into the 50s. Look at these low, low 50s, upper 40s as far south as Northern Mississippi, Northern Alabama, the Cumberland Plateau. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody nips the upper 30s. Um, and, you know, these cooler temperatures, I make it all the way to Charlotte, Columbia, Atlanta. And, uh, I mean, even in a Monday, nice. Monday morning, Tuesday morning, it lingers around. Wednesday morning continues, and then it starts to moderate by the time we get into next week. And, yes, unfortunately, you know, we start to warm on back up. We just are not quite deep enough in the fall. 
to get these consistent, uh, nice fall-like temperatures. But I don't want to leave you guys hanging up here in the northeast. These are low time temperatures tomorrow morning. This is Sunday morning. That'll be the real chill Sunday morning. You'll really, really feel it up here. And Monday morning too, nice chilly uh, temperatures to get those uh, leaves turning. Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning begins to moderate all the way to Thursday morning and we start to warm up a little bit. So nice, nice conditions for sure. Uh, as far as what's happening weather wise across the entire little 48 for today, well, right now we got a lot of Gulf moisture down in the deep south. Um, this is not surprising at all. We've been dealing with it, dealing with it over the last several days and nothing has really changed with this pattern. We even have some flash flood warnings ongoing in southern Louisiana. So a lot of rain continues to fall along the Gulf coastline. You see this thin area of showers and heavy rain moving across the Midwest and Ohio Valley. And southern Ontario, that is associated with our cold front. Cooler air oozing in behind this. A little bit of a lag, but it's there. And then we got a little bit of northerly flow associated with this upper low of this trough. Diving down into Minnesota. This cooler air is actually moving over the Great Lakes. And actually uh, popping off some lake effect showers. Not snow, we're still in September, but showers. So you can tell that cooler and cooler air is steadily kind of shooting down from the north more and more frequently over the next several days and the weeks to come as we get a little bit deeper into fall so that's what's going on right now watches warnings advisories pivotal weather continues to be weird and glitched up and stuck on september 2nd so we got to continue to look at this but check it out frost advisories up here for northeast minnesota northern wisconsin so some of these will probably get issued for like the UP of Michigan, too, in the coming hours and updates here. Heat advisories for southern Florida. Uh, flood watches down for areas of the Gulf Coastline. Excessive heat warnings in the southwest. Heat advisories in the orange. Um, red flag warnings and more of this pink color. So it's just very hot out west. Um, the excessive rainfall outlook. A slight risk in the yellow. That means you have at least a 15% chance of rainfall exceeding Flash flood guidance within 25 miles on a given point. That red area is a 40% chance of that. So a flooding threat is, is certainly there across southeast Louisiana and even areas of southern Mississippi too. So be aware of that. Um, the Storm Prediction Center, if you live in the light green, just a general risk of thunderstorms. But that dark green, there is a risk of severe weather in Ohio, northern Kentucky, southeast Indiana, uh, maybe even a small section of western PA, but you know, I just some gusty winds, some small hail, guys. This is not going to be anything to be super concerned about. Just, just a lift in the atmosphere associated with this cold front that's on the way. So just be expecting some storms that could pack a bit of a punch today in a, the Ohio Valley. The southeast is going to break this down. Um, no real point in zooming into some of these you know, areas as far as the radar, we will zoom into it as far as how much rain could fall. But, you know, we take it to midday, just scattered light rain will fall throughout the deep south, Louisiana to Georgia, low country of South Carolina. Okay, it'll be heavier the more south you get. The closer to the Gulf shoreline you get, the more that this rain will become heavy. You'll even get some storms and the rain will add up much faster. Down in Florida, just some scattered downpours. You get more so in the panhandle, more of a widespread rain. But as we are getting into this evening, you know, a lot of areas across the south, just a good night to stay indoors, watch a movie, and just chill out with the family. You know, out and about in the town across these southern states, you know, it's probably going to be a wet one. We're going to need an umbrella. But, you know, we're starting to move moving into the overnight hours. Just light rain for the most part overspreading these states. Um, but like I said, pockets of heavier rain as possible out there than we get into tomorrow morning. Um Certainly some rain across South Carolina, Southeast North Carolina, light rain scattered across Georgia. Got a feeling our soccer games are going to get canceled here in Central South Carolina tomorrow. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Um, I am optimistic about it. But the Gulf Coastline, I mean, it just tells you the story right here. Much heavier rain if you live, you know, along the coast and just an hour north of it. Uh, you know, two, three, maybe as much as four inches of rain. You're starting to move inland. You got this secondary pocket of maybe a quarter inch to an inch of rain. But then there's a sharp cutoff once you get in the northern Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. And, at, and like Atlanta, for example, could be where that cutoff is. Southern sections of Atlanta could get enough rain to give you a good soaking. You get north of Atlanta, 
I mean, you might not get much of anything. Uh, so certainly a feast and famine out here, that's for sure. And, you know, you go and look at, uh, let's look at Georgia. And, yeah, same thing in the South Carolina. Like, I don't, we might not get much of rain. We need rain. I think I've gotten two-tenths of an inch of rain in about three weeks at my house. Um, but I know some people haven't gotten any. But, you know, a good bit of rain will fall in the southern half of Georgia, southern South Carolina. But there's going to be areas that doesn't get that don't get anything out of this. So, uh, you know, we take this all the way out till Sunday morning. And, yeah, I mean, the southern half of Georgia, a good soaking of rain. And looking at Florida, too, you know, there's going to be pockets of heavy rain down here also. The northeast today, and we'll talk about Nova Scotia here in a second as you see that low right there on the right of your screen. We're going to get some storms that cruise across southern Ontario, just Ontario in general, as you can tell, associated with this low along this frontal boundary. These storms could be severe up here in Ontario, especially once you get closer to the Ontario-Quebec um, line there. Uh, but these storms could pack a punch down here in Ohio. You see those bright reds down there all the way into Erie. Could get some storms all the way into western uh, New York State also as we're getting into this evening. And these storms, you know, could be pretty active in northern Kentucky, maybe western West Virginia. But then as we're getting into tomorrow morning, this more so just turns into a widespread rain. So the Finger Lakes area, the Tokyo Plateau, central PA, even western PA, down to West Virginia, waking up to some rain, not a big deal though at all. But a closer look at Ohio, we'll take it out to about, this is around 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., some storms, you know, from anywhere from Dayton all the way to Columbus. I mean, the, the Cleveland, uh, Young was it Youngstown? That might not be the way y'all pronounce it. But anyways, Erie. Um, and then everything becomes widespread by the evening. But the punch that these storms uh, pack, you know, will, will probably lessen, I would say. And then by the time we get into the overnight hours, into tomorrow morning, some cooler air begins to work into Ohio and surrounding states as the rain pretty much leaves the area. Now, I do want to take a look at Nova Scotia right here. Here comes this low moving up. I mean, it's about a thousand millibar low. You know, you're starting to see the rain from this this evening. It'll become widespread overnight across Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, and even portions of Nova Scotia. And... Um, forgot the other island i had all of these memorized um but anyways <clears throat> widespread across this area we get into this afternoon gusty winds i'm still trying to think of, of the other island as i'm talking to you guys and it's messing my uh, train of thought up but uh <clears throat> that's a uh, bother me i love you guys in canada and it's just irritating me i can't think of the other island prince Edward island and then there's this one right here i think this is prince Edward island and then there's uh this one here but anyways let's keep rolling here you guys know what i mean uh but you know widespread rain into the you know tomorrow afternoon tomorrow's just going to be a washout in this area this will continue to move in then it'll move on out and then you'll get the cold front also and it'll cool on down so how much rain could you get from this let's take a look at i think y'all do millimeters y'all do how much rain in millimeters can you guys get so this is between now and about sunday midday going for it looks like like New Brunswick is going to be cut in half, you know, with some people getting rain, some people not. But, you know, it looks like widespread, whoever gets impacted with this storm system, anywhere from 20 to as much as 50 millimeters of rain, more certainly expected along the southern shores of Nova Scotia. As far as winds, guys, um, you guys go by kilometers per hour. You know, the southern shores of Nova Scotia, and you know, good 50 to 75 a uh, kilometer per hour wind gust as possible. You get out to certain areas of like eastern Nova Scotia and out to the island that for whatever reason I cannot remember right now, you know, maybe a little bit more. And if we kind of convert this to miles per hour, yeah, I mean, some gusty winds. So definitely some tropical storm force gusts are possible with this. Hurricane force gust winds, I don't think so. Uh, but certainly will be a quick moving system. So uh, just just be ready for a little bit of a messy weekend for sure up there. Now, if you look down here into the south central U.S., widespread rain will continue for Louisiana, especially the further south you get. We'll get some scattered downpours that are possible throughout the entire state of Texas, even up into Arkansas. But the big storyline is southern Louisiana, southern Mississippi. And then we get into tomorrow. And a closer look at Louisiana here. 
uh, just a washout will continue for the Bayou of Louisiana, uh, Baton Rouge down in New Orleans, and all the communities down here in southeast Louisiana, which, by the way, has some extremely polite people. Um, I chased Hurricane Ida down here back in 2021, and um, extremely nice people. It was just wild how, and I wasn't expecting anything different or expecting anything um, one way or the other, but it, it was wild. It was a hospital down here in Thibodeau. And uh, they were very polite, gave us breakfast and, and all kinds of good stuff. But, you know, we get into uh, this evening, um, just a washout will continue. And then maybe you start to get a bit of a break tomorrow for a period. But still tomorrow morning, you're waking up to a ton of rain. So um, the north central U.S., cooler air is going to move in. You're going to get just some scattered showers into the U.P. of Michigan. Lower Michigan could get a little energy that kind of funnels down throughout uh, Wisconsin throughout the morning and afternoon could deliver some small hill with it some showers uh, This will make it all the way down to Chicago and just these pesky lake effect rain showers will continue Definitely a fall like vibe today up here in the Great Lakes region. That's for sure. So everybody else though in the in the Midwest um in the Dakotas, pretty quiet weather. And out west, it's quiet too, guys. There's nothing to speak on, nothing to talk about. A little bit of moisture possible in western Nevada. But folks, there ain't nothing going on out here except heat. It's hot for sure. And then temperatures, uh, one last kind of warmish day for the northeast, 60s and 70s, 70s and 80s for the southeast. Uh, there'll be this corridor in between the cold front and the kind of somewhat cloudy, cooler air of the southeast where temperatures will rise into the 80s. Uh, even into the low 90s across the Ohio Valley all the way down to the Mississippi Valley. But a big cool down's on the way. Of course, you got the cool kind of drizzly kind of weather up here in the Great Lakes region. Um, but nice weather expected. Hot out west, hot pretty much everywhere. Not too bad across the high plains, just 80s. Um, but uh, certainly hot across the extreme western U.S. for sure. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, you have a wonderful Friday, and I'll talk to you again soon.